Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Arcana is a deck building area influence kind of game. You're going to have some cards down that you're going to be playing cards from your deck in order to generate influence around these cards so you can add them to your to your deck. And they're going to score you victory points and give you additional powers, etc. And for me, it plays a lot like Smash Up, but I think I like that game better and I'd rather play that game than this one. It has like a City of Caldewan, I think it's called, uh, theme attached to it or IP attached to it, like rogues and thieves and that kind of thing. And if you like that, then this will be pushed up a little bit for you. But this was almost a mismatch of different me mechanisms to me. And while it works and is it broken, it wasn't something that I liked of those. So of the deck building aspect, this wasn't what I enjoyed about it. And of the area influence, this wasn't what I enjoyed about it. Some people are going to really like it, and that's fine, but they kind of pulled out from those mechanisms my least favorite part of them. And I think I would have rather have seen, you know, the Ascension style. I kind of like that a lot with my deck builders. And the area influence, I did like Smash Up, where you just have these kooky powers going on, and things are constantly kind of broken, if you will. So this is going to be, you know, very strategic, very tactical in what you're doing and trying to influence these spots with a theme that I didn't particularly like the artwork on it. I mean, it's good. It's very good art. Don't get me wrong. It just isn't the type of art. I like bright colors. I like, you know, that kind of aspect to it. And this isn't really that. So this is really a game that really wasn't designed for me. But I think that it's important to get different voices on different games. So this one's going to be a purge for me. Arcana, I think it's the city of Codwallen, I think is how you pronounce that's the universe that it's in it. It's about the size of one of those old Fantasy Flight Silverline games if you played those. Open up, you get a rule book, which we'll take a look at in a few minutes, and you're going to get some cards. It's, there's no other components in here. The cards are a little thin for my taste. The, you can see some of these don't have any artwork on them at all. You can see a little bit here. Here's a Guild of Blades, and you have the little icons here that you're utilizing, and some very small text on the bottom here. Not the best design cards I've ever seen. There is some artwork, like here's a blunderbuss uh, shield. Here's a person's head, if you like that. The artwork really isn't to my taste. Like here's a sky station. I mean, this is going to appeal to some people, but not for me. I don't. I mean, some of this is like this is really cool. I like it, but then something like this, I don't have a lot of use for. Eh, I don't know. Uh, your own taste will prevail. But that's all you're going to get inside the box. Here's the rule book. It's going to be a very skinny book as you go through it. I actually found the book very easy to read. Probably in about 15 minutes, you're going to have the objective of the game. The contents, which is kind of list of, with no pictures, which is a bummer. And talks about a little bit of the blade, uh, the setup of the guilds, rather, and the setup of the game here. And with pictures attached, which is great, fantastic. The four different powers that you can have in the game, and a look at some of the cards and what they look like. Then a game round as it goes through. So this is the whole game right here. This is all you need to know in order to play. These are the state cards. We're all a little bit more explanation about some of the cards, and then how to score an end of the game. There are some advanced rules, and on the back, this is really all you need in order to play. This is a great reference sheet. Could have been nice if you had had this on a card. You could have handed it out to everybody, but it is right here. And it's a pretty simple game to learn how to play. 15 minutes. If you're a slow reader, maybe 20, you'll be ready to go. So the set of the game is pretty easy. You're going to take a guild. In this case, I just got the ferryman. And you'll take the cards associated with the ferryman. You'll take these and you will shuffle them up and set them aside. This will be kind of like your starting hand in a deck builder. Then you're going to make five piles of 12 cards. Uh, you're going to have one in the middle and two on each side. So the players will be sitting around. And then once you're set up to go, you are ready. The one in the middle is considered the free zone. You'll take the bottom five cards and you'll mix in the game over card inside of that. So the game over card will be in the bottom six cards of the free zone, which is the middle deck. And you're ready. Each of the cards for the zones are flipped over which gives you areas to battle over. If you ever played Smash Up, it's very similar. If not, don't worry, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know. Each of these cards are going to have four possible areas here. One will be in gold, so it's a little bit brighter than the rest. That will be the number that you're trying to obtain. In this case, you're trying to purchase it. In this case, you are trying to get here. And then you'll add this card if you're able to win it into your discard pile, just like a regular deck builder. 
On your turn, you're going to draw four cards from your deck into your hand, and these will be the four cards that you have to play. On your turn, it's very simple. You can take a card, and you can play it down. Now, this has a four in this area, so it would be very helpful if I found a card like this one that has an eight there, so I want to play it that. And based on where you're sitting, I am kind of have everything in here, so I'll just kind of move this out of the way just so you can kind of see, and we'll just kind of fool around with one deck, even though you know there's five decks you can play. So let's zoom in on this just a little bit. So we were trying to obtain an eight, so maybe I would play this. Now, if it's within two spaces of me, I can place it face down. If it's more than two away from me, I would have to place it face up. I'm gonna place it face up just so you can kind of see it. Now the player sitting over here would place his cards here. They would place their cards here. And then the person sitting over here would place their cards on this side of it. And that would continue on. Everybody would play a card to any of the five decks they wanted to. If you wanted to play multiples there, you'd be able to do that. Let's say I wanted to do something like that. Just for illustration purposes, until all the cards are played, and then the round will end. If you meet or exceed the number you're trying to get and you have the highest amount, you would take your cards, put them in your discard pile, with this card also going in your discard pile. Anybody else who was there that didn't win, their cards would just go in a discard pile and they do not get to add this card. You would do that for all five locations. If somebody did not meet the amount, then the card would just stay there for the next round. If somebody won it, like in this case I was able to, then the next round this card would be flipped over and you would have this. Now when my deck runs out and I want to draw four cards and I don't have enough cards, I would take whatever my discard pile I would shuffle them together and draw cards. And that's how this new card I was able to obtain would be added into my deck. At the bottom of these cards, you will see victory points. So once the game over card is revealed, everyone will finish the round and you add up who has the most victory points and that will be the winner of the game. Now, as an advanced variant, you can add these objective cards. Everybody will get four at the beginning of the game. You will discard two and you'll have two remaining. And so if you obtain this player, it needs to control three game head stakes. Player needs to control three burger and stakes, and you get the amount of victory points at the bottom. Now there's a whole bunch of these, so different stakes that you want to get, and you'll be able to control those for victory points, and that's kind of how the objective cards will work. Who should buy this game? First of all, if you like the kind of area influence games and you want a little card game to go with that, I think that I have the Fantasy Flight Silverline Collection, so a very portable, very small game, a little bit of deck building into it. If you're into the IP, the City of Cauldron, I think that you're really going to like this. The Rogue, the Thieves, if you like that kind of aspect, if you like the artwork, I think it's really going to be put in there for you. And there's some unique things going on here. You know, this is one of the first ones, I think, to have done some of these things. So if you wanted to go back and kind of see where these things started and have a darn good game, this would be it for you. For me, it's going to be a pass. I think you're going to want to play this with at least three or four players. I think the more there is, a little bit more of the fighting that kind of goes on for the aspects of the spots. So that's kind of what I think. For us, it's going to be a purge. I get what this game gives elsewhere and in a package I like better. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate you tuning in. If you liked it, please like it and hit that little subscribe button. That really helps out the channel. lets us know that you're getting the videos that you want. If you agreed or disagree with what I said, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say, and I promise that I will comment back. Thanks for watching, and everybody else, keep playing.